How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome back to the Dual Archives. Uh, we're in episode 3. Last two episodes we did uh, were in 2014. This time around we're jumping ahead to 2017 at ARGCS Hartford. Um, and we have a very, very interesting matchup today. If you guys haven't seen the first two episodes, I'll leave a link to them down in the description. Uh, the first one that we did was BA versus Shadal. And then we did Mermail versus Firefist. And we went back in time a little bit to do that one. Now we're jumping ahead a few years. Um, and we have DDD. That's right. DDD versus Blue Eyes. Here in the grand finals of ARG Hartford 2017. I know that might sound weird. DDD in the finals of a uh, pretty much a premiere event. I know sounds pretty crazy, right? But uh, this was that time where DDD had just got the structure deck and the deck was like actually meta. Like DDD was a very, very good deck for I want to say about a week. I know it sounds pretty sad. DDD got the um, bad end of the deal, if you will. The structure deck came out uh, very, very late, right before the release of Zodiac, and then it got slammed with Master Rule 4 later on that year. But um, it is what it is. You hate to see it. Um, and this video was uploaded January 30th, 2017. I'll leave a link to it, as always, down in the description um, if you guys want to watch the original video yourself. Um, yeah, so this video is a little over four years old right now um i was definitely yeah i was definitely playing at this point i think i was probably playing ddd as well um and i did uh, a lot of very cool ddd videos on the channel too so a lot of memories um but let's take a look at what the top 16 was for this event we had four metal foe four paleo frog three abc three dd uh, one Blue Eyes and one Metal Foe Yang Zing. Interestingly enough, that one Blue Eyes sneaking in here to the finals. Piloted by Jared Randolph and Jeff Jones on the DDD. Um, so let's get right into it. Here we are in game one. And uh, I believe the uh, the top part of the video here is not edited or not changed yet. It will change soon enough to have Jeff's opponent's uh, name and deck correct. But Jeff looks like he's starting off with Pot of Desires card was relatively new at this point um yeah i think it was like the first retrain no i don't want to say it was the first retrain of the of the pots but it was like the first really good one because i think before that we had riches and acquisitiveness but uh uh you know uh, desires is really strong we're also seeing a lure of darkness now activating uh the swirl slime sending it with necro slime going for Genghis. there is the contract normal summoning lamia and um Oh yeah, playing. Okay, first I'm like, what is he doing with the Ragnar? He's playing it in the Pendulum Scale because for those that don't know, DDD is one of my favorite decks of all time, and it's my favorite because of what you're basically about to see Jeff do. This is a deck um, that can pretty much play all of the summoning mechanics except Ritual. Even nowadays, it can do links uh, because it has a link, a pretty good one. Um, but it uses all sorts of different summoning mechanics to chain summons together. Uh, where you, you make one monster, you send it off, you summon another monster, and then it summons it back, and then it triggers that monster to summon another one. Very, very cool combo deck. So he's probably going to synchro into Gust King Gal Alexander. That's going to trigger the Genghis, or not the Genghis, um, the Ragnarok and the Pendulum Scale. Going to summon back the Genghis. And I'm not sure if he's going to use the Gust King here, but he might because that can bring back the Lamy. He's also going to take a thousand from the Ragnarok. It looks like he's going to. And if he wanted to, he could now even use Genghis to revive a card since Lamia just hit the board. So, so you see what I mean? It can just chain summon after summon. Uh, but I don't really think he needs to do that. He's probably going to step up into a Crystal Wing right now. Um, also, or, or Curse King Siegfried, that works really well too. Uh, and then he's going to Synchro into the Meteor Burst Dragon. And uh, basically, the way I could describe this Lamia was like is the best tuner in the deck um even to this day is still the best tuner and uh you could bring lamia back via its own effect by i think sending any dd card from your hand or field to the graveyard um but it got banished when it leave the field so you wanted to try to summon lamia as many times as possible without using its own effects you can keep playing like hot potato with it um until you absolutely have to use it so meteor burst such a classic extender it's going to summon ragnarok out of the scale that's going to trigger ragnarok to bring back a ddd 
bringing back Genghis. And we'll see where he takes this. Um, yeah, so he's going to send off the Genghis now. And there's the Crystal Wing. You see, he's saving it for last here. I would imagine he's going to make Crystal Wing. And that's exactly what he does. Also, a relatively new Synchro at the time, too. Uh, now going to use Necro Slime, fusing from Grave, going for Beowulf, and going for number 38, Hope Harbinger. So just like that, he's got set up a Monster Negate, a Spell Negate, Spell Trap Negate from the first king siegfried and we all know number 38 a uh, spell negate a spell card effect a spell card activation or effect negate and it can redirect attacks as well alongside setting two back row max c and vanity's emptiness both legal at this time that reminds me i should probably go pull up both players deck lists real quick all right both deck lists are pulled up and that is one of the reasons why i wanted to do that because jeff is on vanity's um, so, I mean, you look at this board, he shotguns the vanities because why not? I even if he's got something like Twin Twister, um, or MST, he can just negate it. And there's, that's, that's just, that's just the end of it, basically. So, I'm curious to see why Randolph has not scooped yet, but maybe there's some out that he has in his deck. Going to start with Melody, pitching, uh, Spirit Dragon, if I remember it correctly, uh, to go ahead and add basically two copies of Blue Eyes. Probably going to add regular Blue Eyes and then with it a copy of Alternative Dragon. Or just going for two Blue Eyes. I've been corrected yet again. Um, but the trap lineup for Jeff is D Barrier, Solemn Strike, Dark Contract, and Vanities. Vanities being a one of. Um, looks like the trade in will get negated. And yeah, as expected, that's game. I mean, how do you beat that board? Um, I don't. I think Cosmic Cyclone was out. Yeah, I mean, I guess the way you beat this board is by having three MSTs. I guess that's how you beat it. Because you go MST, Siegfried negates the first one. You chain another one, 38 negates the second one, and then you need a third one. Um, That's a rough board. Or maybe some way get a beater on field and crash the 38, then have a back row. Well, if you crash 38, that deals with the problem. Because uh, 38 will go to the Grave Sending Emptiness. But I think the issue was that he couldn't get a monster on board with Emptiness up. The monster negate the spell. Oh my, yeah, that's just... that. Uh, Jeff probably knew instantly. He's like, how long is it, how long is it going to be before he scoops? And yeah, he negates it. Sends for cost too. So basically just makes him, you know, discard two for nothing basically. And uh, no surprise, we see Jeff take it there. Uh, so let's skip through the side decking. Actually, while they side deck... Um, let's take a look at, uh, the side deck for, uh, Jeff and Jared here. I, I gotta admit, uh, if you Google the ARGCS Harper 2017, uh, top 16, and you see the Google Drive for everybody's deck list, some people have some terrible handwriting, so, Jared, my man, your handwriting is not that legible, but I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to read it, but, um, looks like Jared is on two DD Crow, two Gamma Seal, three Anti Spell, two Forbidden Chalice, Two Danko Saka, two System Down, one Effect Valor, and one Twin Twister. And he is on two Twin Twister in the main deck. Um, and I think that's it for back row removal, as far as I can see. Jeff Siding, DD Crow, Danko Saka, Fossil Dyna, Patchy Cephalo at three copies. That's an interesting choice. Regeki, Darkle at two, System Down at three, Magical Spring at three as well. And that makes sense because. Metal Foe is very, very popular at this point, and it's basically about to be phased out completely uh, by Zodiac and True Draco, the two decks that are going to basically uh, be synonymous with 2017. At least when I think about 2017 Yu-Gi-Oh, I solely think about I think about three decks. I think about True King Dino, I think about uh, Zodiac, Zodiac, True Draco, and just True Draco. Those are the three decks that I think about, and then I also think about Lynx. Uh, master rule four um so yeah here in game three it's no surprise that jared is gonna go first you don't want to risk running into uh oh yeah and i remember sage being able to search valor was actually a really cool thing ultimate rare valor too going for melody now discarding the uh white stone of ancient adding blue eyes and adding alternative it's crazy to think that this deck actually won worlds um, although Worlds is a completely different format, completely different ban list, viable decks are completely different. Um, 
Blue Eyes was actually an extremely good deck for a very long time, but um, not really so great anymore. Could definitely use some more support instead of reprinting Alternative Dragon for the 15th time. Um, so yeah, he's going to go into... Um, what is this card called? I forget the name. Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon, what's the name of the one in the main deck? Uh, Dragon Spirit of White? Oh, that's what it is. So yeah, that's Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. The other one that... End phase summons itself and I think banishes a back row. That's that's Dragon Spirit of White. Um Yeah, so going to go into the Spirit Dragon, which could basically tag out. And yeah, and there's the the ancient uh the Stone of Legends summoning out the blue eyes uh Dragon of White, Spirit of White. I cannot get this right to save my life. And yeah, now using the tag out effect of Spirit Dragon, um, which sometimes is used to summon out uh Moonlight Rose Dragon. Uh, for a bounce um, really really cool card so going into uh this one what was the name of this card man azure eyes azure eyes that's what it was so that grants i think protection from battle or just like destruction or targeting i think so it's kind of like a very control board it's kind of combo but it's like very very mid-range not much comboing going on but he's going to try to play the control game here uh, as for traps, Jared is on. He's on D barrier and emptiness. Two D barrier and one emptiness. Um, so if he's got set traps, you know those could be it. But he could be siding anti spell too. Could also be siding chalice. That wouldn't be so bad here. Let's see pot of desires for Jeff, and see what he decides to do here gonna go ahead and activate swirl slime in hand and let's see if he has a response we know he has an effect valor so that will prove to probably actually be a little hard to play through but not that hard just because ddd has like so many extension plays it can make um so we will go into the Genghis. using with the uh kepler no not kepler uh copernicus and the green now ddd for those that don't know is a very like intensive combo deck so um and i know this from personal experience like it's it there's you oftentimes have so many options at your disposal and so many ways to easily mess them up um depending on how you sequence them so it's very very mentally taxing deck and i mean it's no surprise somebody like jeff jones is able to pilot all the way to the finals here um it's it takes a lot as you can see he's taking his time to think um and it looks like he's opened that copy of fossil dina here and uh swirl bringing out lamia attempting to use uh the Genghis. it's met with a valor so we'll see what he does next he could synchro into meteor burst that could be a play because he could yeah meteor burst brings out the ragnarok ragnarok brings out Genghis. he could use meteor burst uh ragnarok to banish but looks like instead he's gonna go for gal alexander and he's gonna trigger ragnarok and attempt to bring back the lamia or what would have been the Genghis. but he's got the emptiness there um so yeah as you can see the one valor pretty much not being a problem whatsoever um he did have to use the swirl slime extender though and we'll see what else he does looks like he's gonna set the fossil dyna and pass now setting the fossil dyna is really really interesting um because i i i i feel like i could say this myself if i was in jared's situation if you don't know the other person's deck list like when you see your opponent set a monster like that, especially in a deck like DDD, like, you don't really... You're probably not thinking, like, oh, yeah, that's a Fossil Dyna. You know what I mean? Like, that's probably the last thing that comes to your mind. So, the fact that that's what it is is actually pretty hilarious. And he's actually citing three copies of Fossil Dyna, too. I mean, why play one Vanities when you could play four, essentially? Um, so, he's going to play Dragon Shrine, uh, send some cards to the grave, and uh, that is basically going to clear his own emptiness he's going to get alternative dragon on the field and he's just got big beaters so he's just going to go into the battle phase is he going to attack the set monster and he is fossil dying and he flips it up and my man is shook this actually is incorrect because right now azurize 
uh, should be protecting uh, both itself and the one Spirit of White that was on the board from Destruction by Card Effects. Um, and they cannot be targeted. Neither player can target Dragon Monsters you currently control with Card Effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by Card Effects. So, the only monster that should have died in that exchange from the Fossil Dyna is the Alternative Dragon. And I believe they actually correct this because I wanted to stop and pull up the Silver Eyes effect because I wanted to get the, the exact text correct. End phase, Azure Eyes comes out and banishes the uh, Ragnarok scale, which is pretty solid. And uh, yeah, I think they do correct that here in a moment uh, regarding the Silver Eyes. Yeah, so, or uh, Azure Eyes. So yeah, they, they both come back to the field. He's still able to swing in for... Uh, I think 25 damage a piece, 2,500 damage. The end phase Azurai still comes out, and that does it for his turn. Uh, and yeah, that is and yeah until the end of the next turn. So now here on Jeff's turn, all of his dragon monsters can be targeted and destroyed by card effects, which is going to be helpful. Um, so he's going to check his graveyard. He's got a Lamia. Yeah, Lamia is really the only thing he can work with right now. Um, definitely plays that can be made. I mean, if he's got, like, uh, just about to say it, if he's got a Kepler, that's really, really good. Allow him to get Contract. Probably could go for Swirl off of that. Um, he just needs to get, like, his Fusion Engine going, because he's got a lot of great cards in the graveyard. The fact that he has Alexander and Genghis in Grave is nice. They don't do anything in the Grave on their own. But that's not really what matters. It matters that they're there, and if you can just revive them, uh, then one will revive another. And just before you know it, his whole field is reassembled, and he can very easily clear the field uh, that his opponent has right now. Crystal Wing can get over any of those monsters. Same thing with Siegfried at 28, and same thing with number 38. So he does pick up a copy of Necro Slime, and it looks like... He is going to summon the Lamia by pitching the Necro Slime. And it looks like he has D Barrier in response to the summon. I imagine he called Fusion because he sent the Necro Slime to the grave. At least that makes uh, the most sense to me. Yeah, he sent Necro Slime, summon Lamia out of grave. So. It would make the most sense that he calls fusion there but of course there are so many other methods that you could call to slow ddd down um but i think fusion is definitely the best and yeah i was gonna say he's probably gonna go into the formula synchron here that is in his deck list and he's going to go for allure now um it's weird that his banished pile is all the way off his mat i wish i could see it and there's a soul charge soul charge is so so good but it's not going to be that great here um I mean, he can bring back the Gus King, and I think Necro Slime is a level one, but it's not a tuner. Um, I'm not sure what other synchros he could possibly go into at this point. Uh, let's see, he's playing TG Hyper Librarian, Gus King, Odd Eyes Meteor Burst. Uh, he is playing Omega. He's playing Formula. He's playing Siegfried. He's playing Scarlight Red Dragon. That would actually be huge if you could get to that here for uh, some burn damage. Um, or I think it, yeah, Scarlight, I think it burns uh, on special summon. Crystal Wing is also playing Trish. So Trish is an option too. Um, so he's going to bring back three. Gus King, Copernicus, and a copy of Necro Slime. And it looks like Copernicus will be able to activate here, which is crazy that Soul Charge doesn't even negate the monsters that it brings out to. Like, that card was so, so absolutely absurd. Um, some of those cards you look back and you're like, can't believe it was printed. Um, I'm just going to look up Scarlight real quick. Yeah, Scarlight, Red Dragon, Archfiend. Um, once per turn, you can destroy as many, uh, as many special summon effect monsters in the field as possible to attack less than or equal to this card, then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. So, yeah, he could go for that and then burn his opponent for 15. He's locked out of the battle phase right now because of Soul Charge, and it looks like Copernicus is just going to dump another copy of the Lamia to the grave. But yeah, under D Barrier right now, um... Not much he can do with the, the, the synchro options that he has available. I going to say, you know, he could go for Trish, but he definitely can't. Um, yeah, it looks like end phase. Uh, the Spirit of White will tag out for a regular Blue Eyes. 
and a, another Spirit of White will get summoned, banishing his Dark Contract. And, I mean, four big monsters for four of Jeff's monsters, but if he can't kill him right here, he's only at 2,500 life points. If he can't kill him, Jeff is going to have a loaded graveyard for next turn. He's going to have a Necro Slime. He is going to have a Lamia. I see Heratic Dragon of Heliopolis in the extra deck there, too. That could come in kind of clutch. Um, I mean, the one the one good thing that I would say uh, Blue Eyes has going for it here is it's massive, like, rank 8 pool. There's some very, very strong rank 8s it could have access to, but it looks like he's just going to go into the battle phase, clear formula, clear Copernicus, clear Gale, and clear Necro Slime. Uh, not taking any damage in that battle phase, which is really, really nice. We'll see if he does anything in main phase 2 here. Could easily make a rank 8 play. I don't see why you don't make a rank 8 play here, but exactly what is he going to make? That's the real question. Um, I see number 38 there. I think I see Jim... Jimmy Puppet. I think I see Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder. Giant Grinder. I can't speak, man. I cannot speak. But I'm not recording this episode at like 3 in the morning like I did for the last one. It's only like midnight right now, so we're making progress. I see Cypher Dragon. I know Cypher Dragon was played alongside Full Armor. I'm not actually sure if Cypher Blade was out yet. Um, at least part of the Galaxy package in the extra deck. So two Spirit Dragons getting overlaid. And I'm going to go for Cypher Dragon. Oh, that's right. This card was still legal. Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. The card that, A, I don't know why it was named a Galaxy card. And B, why was this card printed? This card is absolutely absurd. Just dump three dragons to the grave with different names. I'm going to send Whitestone a Legend, the Whitestone of Ancients, a copy of Blue Eyes, and Jeff is now going to be forced to banish, I think, three monsters from his deck uh, with different names. And, I mean, if you're Jeff at this point, it's not huge because he can basically just deck thin three cards. I think one of the cards we saw him get rid of was DD Crow. Um, one was probably an effect failure because at this point, if you're Jeff, you do not want to top deck either of those cards. You don't want to top deck a DD Crow. You don't want to top deck a value. You want to top deck some sort of starter or extender here. Because uh, Jared has no interruptions. So if he draws the cards he needs, he can combo right through this and um, just play through the whole, the whole board. Uh, no problems whatsoever. And yeah, he's added alternative and blue eyes um, off the other cards that he sent. So he, he, he does know that he has those. And we're going to see him activate Necro Slime. He's going to chain Max C. He's going to go for Beowulf. Beowulf is going to just get over the Azure Eyes. I think Beowulf is at 3k. So he's only going to be able to get over 500. He's going to set a monster and pass. I see a DD Crow in Jeff's hand, which is not uh, you know, making him too happy. But yeah, you, he obviously can't keep extending through the the Max C there, which uh, yeah, is not going to be very good so he's gonna force to be, make a, a bare minimum play and uh, that's basically gonna spell game because the alternative can pop the set monster and he's just gonna be able to swing in for a game with all the monsters that he has i mean dark matter dragon is at 4500 um so we're going into a game three um like you could just see like the the blue eyes deck like i mean it can put up some pretty big boards uh with spirit dragon and like number 38 tagging into well, I mean, Spirit Dragon's also just really great because it has the graveyard negation, too. Um, it's like a really solid card. Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. Uh, neither player... Let me read this card here. Neither player can special summon two or more monsters at the same time, so that stops Soul Charge, um, or at least makes it a very small Soul Charge. Uh, during either player's turn, when an effect or a card in the graveyard is activated, you can negate the activation, and then it can tag out into a light dragon-type synchro monster from the extra deck, except itself. Um, by tributing it. It's like, like Blue Eyes doesn't look like much, but back in the day, it was a really strong deck. It was very consistent thanks to the help of cards like Trade In. Uh, some people playing Cards of Consonants. Um, then there was also um, Melody, too, which I think was a fairly new card. And it could just spit out big level A bodies more efficiently than a deck like Galaxy can do. I'm still waiting for, for uh, Galaxy Eyes Alternative Dragon, by the way. But yeah, it's like. Jeff, I feel like Jeff definitely could have made a play there. I mean, actually, I'm not sure about that. He had Fossil Dina and DD Crow in hand. And I'm not sure what the set card was. But we saw Jared just summon Alternative and go to Pop It. 
And it was a fossil dino. So we had two fossil dino there. Man, if he would have ran into that fossil dino again, um, he just clearly didn't learn his lesson from the first time. So yeah, we're on to a game three. And uh, I imagine Jeff's probably going to go first. Because combo is combo. If he can pull it off, he's going to win this one. No doubt. Especially if he's, if he's as good as he was in game one and opens like he opened there. Because that was just like... That was just absurd. Like, that was just that was just savage. It was just too savage. But I see DD Crow in the opening hand. I see Contract. I'm trying to I'm trying to check their hands as like easily as I can here, but it's hard to tell. I think I see a swirl in Jeff's hand as well. I see DD Crow. I saw Contract. I think I saw Swirl. I'm gonna add Necro Slime. He's also got Lamia too. And I'm pretty sure that's like the three card like those are the three cards you want in your hand, pretty much in like any combination is swirl necro and lamia like you have those three cards you have full combo so if uh jared doesn't have max c here which it looks like he doesn't because if he did he definitely would have chained it no reason not to normal summons lamia synchros into gus king now using necro banishing itself and the Genghis for another Genghis. that's gonna trigger gale bringing back lamia synchro eight for uh, probably Siegfried here. It might not be full combo, actually. Uh, he might be missing out on the 38. Um, so, yeah. That uh, summon of Siegfried is going to trigger Genghis to bring back the Gus King. And now setting off Contract for Lamia. And this is probably where we'll see a copy of Crystal Wing get made. Yep. And that Lamia should be banished. Uh, we'll see if it... It should be banished. Somebody might catch that. We'll see. Um... Very easy thing to forget. Um, so yeah, we'll see if you, we'll see if it gets caught. I hope it does because it should be banished. But has DD Crow and I think another contract in hand. DD Crow is going to be uh, pretty pretty good here. Uh, Melody is going to get negated right away by Siegfried. Can't let that card go through. He gets access to uh, you know a 3K beater that can pop a card, um, which is also an inherent summon, I believe. Pretty sure Alternative Dragon is an inherent summon. I want to check right now. Uh, alternative. Yeah. Blue Eyes Alternative. Um, must first be special summon uh, from your hand by revealing Blue Eyes White Dragon in your hand. Yeah. So it, it's an inherent summon. So you summon and then reveal. I remember people always used to think that you had to reveal the Blue Eyes first to summon it, but you don't. You just literally summon Alternative. Then you have to reveal a Blue Eyes White Dragon in your hand to make it a legal summon. Um, very interesting wording of the card. Um, but Jared sets one and passes. Not looking too hot there. Lamia is still in the graveyard. Unless I'm missing something, I believe that Lamia should be banished. Um, unless it was a different copy. I don't think it was. One for one, discarding DD Crow, chains Max C. He could negate it with the Crystal Wing. Now, this is the real question. Does he negate it with the Crystal Wing? I think he does. Guessing that's what that hand gesture meant is that he's going to negate it. Yep, summoning Copernicus. He's not drawing off of it. Um, and looks like he's gonna use Copernicus here. That's probably gonna grab contract. Well, it's gotta grab con or he could grab swamp. Uh, and then he's gonna use contract that's gonna grab Ragnarok. Uh banishing uh the swirl to bring out Ragnarok. Um sending it off to banish, and that is game, and Jeff takes it. Jeff oh wait, I think this is a best of five. I think that's a best of five. That's right. ARGs does best of five. I forgot about that. So 2-1. We're heading into a game four. If Jeff wins this one, it is over. Um, yeah, for those that didn't know, ARG does uh, best, or well, they did best of five in the finals, which I think is really cool. I would like to see actual Yu-Gi-Oh! like Konami officially sanctioned events do something like that because like I feel like the finals is like a little too important to be tossed up to like... Um, one bad hand or, or losing the die roll like at least when you go best of five you have like you know one more chance or one or two more chances to like really turn it around um and it gives it the spectators like a better overall um you know viewing and understanding of what each deck is capable of instead of just like because now i feel like maybe it's more so nowadays with today's format like very very dice rolly Especially when you take into account like a deck like Dragon Link versus Drytron, both insane combo decks, or um, like Tri Brigade versus Drytron. Like whoever goes first is pretty much gonna win that game probably. 
Um, unless they draw like some insane blowout card like Dark Ruler, Droplets, Talons. Like it's actually really refreshing to see that those cards aren't a part of this meta. But then again, we have Maxi and Emptiness, which I think Maxi's at two currently and Emptiness is at one, which really sucks to see a card like Emptiness at one. If you played in that format, you know it sucks. Um, so Jared gonna go first here. I mean, this also might be a case, uh, which is kind of funny that I'm mentioning it, because like this also might be a case of whoever wins die roll and gets to go first kind of wins the match type type beat, but I definitely think that uh, the DDD deck has what it takes to actually play through the Blue Eyes board uh, rather easily. Um, so he's going to normal summon Sage. Sage is going to add Whitestone, cards of Consonance to draw two, picks up Melody and one other card. Uh, the white stone is going to add blue eyes. And, oh, I think it's a trade and he picked up. Yeah, there is a uh, melody discarding white stone of ancient. I bet Jeff wishes he had ash blossom right now, but that card is actually not released yet. Uh, Ghost ogre is out, I believe, here in 2017, but ash blossom is yet to be out. Um, which is crazy to think of a format without ash blossom, right? Alternative gets summoned, activates trade-in to draw two more. Um, another trade-in picking up Max C. Ooh. This one's not looking too hot for Jeff right now. He's going to have one set, which is either a strike or a vanities. Going for Spirit Dragon. And checking Grave End Phase if he has a White Stone of Ancient, which I think he does. And that's going to summon Dragon Spirit of White. Um, just a uh, 2,500 beater. Uh, for his opponent to have to worry about quite a few cards in hand here again it doesn't look like much but this is a very standard board for blue eyes and tagging out now here for the azure eyes chains max c to that he'll get a draw definitely very helpful here because i mean jeff is one win away from taking this match um so the one draw he'll take it into allure of darkness uh i mean a draw spell obviously still used today in ddd See a Raigeki, but the Raigeki is going to be useless here since both Azure Eyes and uh, the uh, Spirit of White cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects right now uh, until the end of Jeff's turn, I believe. So Jeff is going to normal summon the Copernicus, basically the Stratos of the deck. Um, the Stratos that gets the Stratos because, I mean... If you really want to look at it, Dark Contract is technically the Stratos of DDD. Um, because Copernicus only gets you contracts, and your contracts get all of your monsters. So, if you want to look at it technically, and I think... It, did I see Savant Thomas in Jeff's Deckless? Did I see... I see one copy of Thomas. It's been so long since I've seen Thomas in the main deck of a DDD list. It's actually crazy. What a throwback. I know it has something to do with summoning, like, multiple level 8s or something, which is really, really strong. Um, add Ragnarok, plays Kepler and Ragnarok in scale. Jared chains Max C on placement of the scales. And I think, I'm pretty sure Ragnarok's a low scale at like four. I need to look this up right now. I need to see what scale Ragnarok, he's a scale five. He's a lower scale, scale five. That's because he does have Thomas in hand. So he's going to Pendulum Summon Thomas. Jared will get a draw. And then he's going to use Thomas Effect. At least attempt to. And he's going to Valor it. That one's got to hurt a little bit. Uh, because, yeah, the I, I, know, I, know, I know Thomas has something, uh, yeah. An effect that's actually really, really decent here. And it, it is, uh, and I'll throw up cards up on the screen, though, for those that want to read. Um, you can target a DD card in your pendulum zone, destroy that card, and if you do, special summon level 8 DDD monster from your deck in defense position for the rest of the turn, it's a fact if any are negated. Um, so yeah, that would have killed Kepler to bring out a Ragnarok, um, to make a rank 8, most likely. Um, now Azure Eyes here in the end phase, activating to bring back a Blue Eyes. Um, well, it's, it's until the end of, uh, Jared's next turn, so, uh... All monsters, dragon monsters he currently controls cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects, which is really, really good. Alternative dragon's going to kill the uh, Thomas, making sure he doesn't have access to it next turn. Normal summoning Sage, that's going to add a level 1 light tuner. 
for a level one spellcaster going for a fact failure I, I remember the fact that like a lot of people used to say like the fact that sage could just search valor for you is just absolutely nuts um jeff pretty low on card advantage here he's got two set back row he's got a swirl slime in hand goes for another azure eyes and this is gonna be game here if jeff can't do anything about it and it looks like it's going to be um so yeah i i, I thought it was pretty funny because earlier i was mentioning like you know we're in a format where like if you win die roll you kind of win the match and it's kind of funny how i thought it wasn't like this but this is one of those matchups that it seems like it um but i mean i still think ddd has what it takes to be able to to go through the blue eyes board um i mean it really wasn't blue eyes that uh slowed jeff down it was uh max c um I mean, yeah, it definitely was Maxi. I mean, you also had Valor in there, too. Um, but uh, as we saw in one of the previous games, Valor was not a problem for uh, Jeff to play through. Um, at least still ending on his normal combo. Maxi's a hell of a card. Uh, one of the main reasons why I shouldn't come back, because it just single-handedly decides games um, and controls the pace of those turns. Um, so they're going to side. Now both players tied at two games apiece. Jeff going first here, starting with the Zyres. Banishing 10, drawing 2. Probably hoping he didn't banish all of his Swirl Slimes. Organizing the Banish Pile so he can easily see what he has to work with and what he doesn't. Playing Allure, drawing 2 more. More cards total this turn. I don't think any I don't think anybody was on Droll Lock, actually. Yeah, nobody on Droll Lock in this side deck. Um which is funny because you think Droll Lock would actually be really, really good here. I see a Vanity Emptiness in Jeff's hand. And I think that's going to decide this match. Because if Jared does not open a Twin Twister, it's going to just be... That's just lights out. There's, there's just nothing you can do about that. Like, talk about talk about game, cards that decide games. Like, Vanity Emptiness is just one of those cards as well. Um... Let's see what Jeff does. He's, he's really thinking hard on what he wants to banish off of the alert, but he finally makes the decision. Scales both Copernicus and Ragnarok. Pendulum summons out the Copernicus. Foolish's Lamia. Sends Swirl, or a Necro for Lamia. Let's see where he takes this. Is he going to go for Hyper Librarian? Okay, Lamia does get banished this time. He is going for Hyper Library. He normal summons Fossil Dina. And that's it for his turn. That is quite the interesting board, but he's probably just like... Because that's the one thing with the, the Blue Eyes deck is like it, it can't do anything for its normal summon. Like it's, worth, it's best normal summon is Sage with Eyes of Blue, which is not even going to be able to clear over top of the Fossil Dina. Um... But, like, all of the pressure is going to be coming from cards like Alternative, uh, Spirit Dragon, uh, Ancient Stone of Ancient, like, all that stuff. And if you can keep him off of it, like, it's just going to allow Jeff to basically play for free. Um, and if Jeff plays in this match, he wins, I feel like. Because DDD, uh, I think, in, in terms of, like, what is the bigger deck, what's capable of doing more, it's obviously DDD here. Um... I think the more consistent deck, though, might be the Blue Eyes deck has a lower ceiling, but it is, uh, I feel like, a little more consistent because it can play cards like Trade-In, Cards of Consonance, as we're seeing right now, Dragon Shrine, uh, Melody. Um, he just picked up a copy of Soul Charge, but it's not going to do him too much. He's going to just deck thin like crazy right now. He's probably like, where are my Twin Twisters? I mean, does, not even Twin Twisters. Does he even have an out to this Fossil Dina? That's my real question. I mean, his only normal summons are Maxi, uh, Effect Valor, uh, Master with Eyes of Blue. I'm not sure what the stats of that are. Sage, um, White Stone of Legend, White Stone of Ancient. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything he can do to get over this i'm just checking his, his spell lineup i don't see like regeki um yeah the the fossil dina is just well okay 
He does have Forbidden Chalice on the side. So Chalice is what you would have needed to see there um, to be able to prevail. Um, and it looks like he is not drawing that. Jeff swings in with Fossil Dine and Librarian draws the card, swings in again. It's a set maxi. He's probably really happy to see that was a maxi that he had to set. It's one less maxi he can use against him. Jeff has a DD Crow. Picks up Master with Eyes of Blue. I'm not sure of the, uh, the stats on that card, but... Uh, I don't think it's going to be able to... It's only at 300 tech. It's not getting over Fossil Dine. It's 1,200 defense. I think Fossil Dine is at 15 um, or 12. He draws a... It's, a, it's a, the Dragon Revival spell. Um, that's not going to do him any good. I think Jeff might just win this one with Fossil Dine of Beatdown. Um, with, with Hyper Librarian of all things, too. Yeah, Fossil Dine is at 1,200. Um, and, you know, after these, you know, couple turns of passing back and forth, Jeff has been able to acquire some decent card advantage here. Now going to commit to the uh, the contract to go ahead and search. I mean, what a, this is like not how I would have expected this matchup to end. Not at all. I mean, if you told me what would Jeff's board be to, to basically win this match here, I would not have told you Fossil Dino Librarian, that's for sure. I would have said something like 38 Crystal Wing Siegfried. Not this. Normal Summons, Kepler grabs a search there. Battle Phase. It's the last Max C. That's got to be pretty good to know. Uh, swings in with Fossil Dino for 12. He's on 800, and that is the match. I mean, Pretty anticlimactic end to the match. I mean, Jeff still had a Vanity's Emptiness set. Like, I don't think there's any way that Jeff was losing that one. And yeah, that's probably the only, <laughs> the last and only top that DDD will ever have. Um, but I mean, like, that, that was not a very fun end board. Not probably how you want to see, like, a finals end. But it is what it is, right? Like, could not the Fossil Dine, could not the Fossil Dine. Like, he had the cards in his deck to do it. He had the Twins. Uh, he had the Forbidden Chalice. He's only on two Forbidden Chalice. Yeah, just did not see the cards he needed to see. I mean, and that's going to cost him the match, unfortunately. So, Jeff taking this one 3-2 to two against Blue Eyes. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode. If you guys want to see more of my videos, check the two popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, Winter Kill is signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, a special thanks goes to our Divine Level channel members who go above and beyond to support this channel. And they are Cadillacs84 and Pony Stark. Thank you guys so much for your extremely generous support.